Today we're out here showing you this C308 rifle from Century Arms. Uh, it's a pretty much a copy of the HK91, which is a copy of the German G3. It was a semi-automatic version of the German G3, which is pretty much a copy from the design of the Spanish Setma rifle. Anyway, they've been around for many years, uh, well over half a century. And the HK91, which I always wanted one when I was younger, couldn't afford one out of kegs and house payment and working two jobs and, and uh, trying to do everything I could to stay alive. But uh, there's some fine rifles. They got real expensive after the first George Bush president banned them in 89 from importation. Uh, but they're fine rifles for what they're made for. They're excellent battle rifles. As far as a, a long-range target gun, they lack a little bit. There's other designs that are better. But they're excellent, durable, rugged um, battle rifles. And this C-308 from Century Arms does the same thing. Now this is built on a new receiver. Uh, made by uh, PTR four century arms and it's got a new barrel the rest of the parts are surplus parts uh, a couple of things it's got different here that really improved it's got an excellent set of rugged sacks which the 91's always have too this is welded to the top of this receiver it's uh, graduated from uh, 100 to 400 meters different leaves you got here this little device you see on here is a three buck brass catcher holder it does not come with it but I'll show you that in a minute but it's got a uh, Picatinny spec rail on top so you can put an optic on here without buying a real expensive hard to find mount they don't hold it well a lot of those that are made for the HK91 are that way this Picatinny rail eliminates that problem uh, it's got the charging handle standard place you always have flip it up to hold it open to chamber pop in your mat close it and you're ready to go. It's a good rugged way to do it if you got on gloves or whatever. It's easy to handle that way. Um, the safety is just like the where the regular selector switch is on the G3. You got safe and fire. Works real easy. Uh, makes a little noise but not nearly much the HK or something which sounds like uh, slamming the screen door. This works really well. The trigger pull on it is decent. It's a little soft and long like uh, the style is but it's right at six pounds. This rifle, uh, Century specs this thing at eight pounds on their spec chart, but it comes in at almost nine pounds on my scale. It's got an 18 inch barrel on it. It's got a very effective Century Chevron muzzle brake on here. Works really well to uh, attenuate the recoil and keep down the muzzle jump on it. But it's a good, solid replica of HK91. It's got good, decent, solid furniture on it. It uh, works really well. The gun's been 100% reliable with these surplus uh, magazines. It comes with two of these 20 round HK G3 surplus magazines and one five round magazine which mine does not work in this gun. Uh, it might work in another gun. I'm sure if I wanted the Accenture would make good on it but I got no use for a five round mag in a rifle like this so I just let it go. It would not function with that mag. Function perfectly with these cheap and plentiful uh, HK mags which you can buy on the market for from four to five dollars a piece. I recommend you stock up on them before somebody gets the idea of banning those things too. Anyway, it's an excellent rifle for what it does. It's uh, sturdy, it's solid, it's uh, plenty accurate for a battle rifle. My best groups with this was with Buffalo Bore and the hand logs and uh, uh, the set point. It all got right at one and a quarter inches at 100 yards from this rifle rest. I use this uh, Target Shooting Incorporated Model 500 rifle rest. Works really well if you got a gun with extended magazine on. This uh, brass catcher is talking about this is three buck. I use it on ARs and things. It's fastest to a Picatinny rail. Pops in there and it works perfectly with this rifle as it does with most rifles that have a Picatinny rail on top. Anyway, it's a good solid rifle. Uh, it's affordable. It's like a, maybe a fifth of the price of a genuine HK91. Works the same. Operates the same. Sykes are almost the same. Does have the addition of the rail on top. So it's a good value if you want a uh, HK91 style rifle. Uh, this is available from Century Arms. They, they assemble it here in the U.S. using the new receiver and barrel and imported parts. But it's uh, available now. They're in stock just about everywhere you want to find one from Century Arms. From my accuracy testing, I assemble a variety of uh, commercial ammunition in addition to just some blasting ammo I had here, some military surplus stuff. But I uh, got these. Uh, I use the uh, 762 with 51, some U.S. made uh, military stuff, just blasting things, but use some good commercial ammo from my accuracy testing. And I use this loophole Mark IV, uh, 8.5 to 25 power scope, so I can get the most accuracy out of that. And that Picatinny rail on here really makes that work well. However, a scope like this, with this large uh, 
objective bell on it. Makes it a little harder to use the charging handle. Now it did clear it on this, but I wounded myself a time or two working it because I'm left-handed to begin with, so that, that made it a little more difficult. But without the scope on there, works really well, that charging handle does, or smaller scope would. A big bulky scope like this, uh, you really need a different system if you want to use it. It just don't work really well on this rifle, but I did find that necessary to get the best accuracy out of this rifle I could, and that's what I try to do when I'm shooting a rifle. You people don't know, want to know how well I can shoot. You want to see what the rifle will do, and that's why I put a scope like that on this or any other type of rifle that I can and use a good solid rest to shoot it. Now this does have the fluted chamber like uh, HK-91s are, are supposed to have. Uh, it's also, it ejects like an HK-91, which means if you're a hand loader, even if you catch the brass, it's not kind of brass. Uh, several of them, it flattens the mouth like this. Got a good detailed picture we can show you on it. But it's pretty rough on the brass, but uh, most people that are shooting this kind of rifle not hand loaded anyway. They're just flinging it out there, letting it land where it lays. But if you, if you care about uh, taking care of your brass, you might want to select a different type of rifle. But like I said, this is a battle rifle. Soldiers ain't on, on the battleground picking up the brass. They're using this rifle to get the job done. 762 by 51 or 308 does a good job. It's got plenty of power for its intended purpose. Uh, it'll reach way out there and touch what needs touching. And uh, so we're going to shoot a little bit. Function. Yeah, tried to feed too there on that malfunction. Let's see how she runs now. As you can see, uh, shooting the video there, we had one malfunction with this rifle. It was a, a feed problem. It tried to feed two at once, which that's never happened before on this. And we shot a few of these a uh, couple of months ago back in Camden, and they ran really well. Now this one, like I said, the uh, the five round mag just did not function properly in this rifle. The twenty rounders. They all function good except for that one malfunction. We always like to report every malfunction we get with a weapon. Uh, it still runs really well. I like it. Uh, it's a, a great gun for what it is. Giving you a good replica of a HK-91 in a lot more affordable package with a better scope rail and a, a really good sights on it. Anyhow, that's the only malfunction we had. Other than that, it's ran perfectly and uh, we've had a good time with it.